What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the True Blue Podcast. I am your host, Zach Sucardi. It is Thursday, September 8th. I am here with you uh, coming from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. I'm at my sister's place, spending some time, doing some house sitting. You're going to hear probably her dog and my dog walking around. So that's just a little bit of the background noise. My dog has kind of gone blind and deaf. It kind of sucks. And she's got a big house, so she's just like, my dog's walking everywhere. Um, But uh, I got a beautiful view of the Sandia Mountains and her backyard. Coming from New Jersey, where there's really not mountains, there's like rolling hills. It's so beautiful here. And, you know, I've been here 15 years, and I still have fresh eyes. And that's important. Fresh eyes are important. You know? When you can really look at something and just see it, like almost like you're seeing it for the first time, that's definitely a magical thing. So here, we're here. We're rocking and rolling. You know what I'm saying? I shaved. I feel fresh. I feel like a new man. Uh, we're going to talk some self-care. We're going to get into what's been up. We're going to do fucking, you know what I'm saying? Play, Talk some music. Oh, got to read some poetry. You know, I'm going to pause this because I don't have my poetry with me. So, you know what? Hold on the line real quick. Okay, we're back. We're back. You know, pausing things nowadays is way easy. But back in the day when you had to pause like a like a cassette tape or a CD, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. You feel like you were like burning it out. You know what I'm saying? Even with like, if, you, if you're old school like me, like VHS tapes, pausing it. I don't know, but you can pause shit now. It's so fucking easy. It's pretty amazing. Um, so kudos to that. So yeah, I just wanted to get the poetry book. I'm uh, sitting at the the, uh, dinner, the dining table, and I just got a beautiful view. God bless beautiful views, you know? Like on the reallys. So yeah, we're going to get into all the stuff I just mentioned. Um, and you know, I'm going to start this off by reading from these prayer books I have. And I want to encourage someone, or I want to encourage everyone to uh, to do something like this on a daily. It doesn't have to be prayer books, but some sort of affirmation, some sort of thing that you get daily. I think there is an app my coworker told me about. It's called like You or I Am or something, and it gives you like affirmations um, every day. I think it's I Am. Let me let me actually do some some googling for for you all here and see. Um, but I think it's really helpful because it's neat that there's one for every damn day of the year. Um, and I think it's kind of like, almost like if you look at it like a fortune cookie for every day. Yeah, I am. So check out the I am app, Daily Affirmations. So I have these two books that I got. I'm Catholic, so I got these two books. The first one is Healing Prayers for Every Day. It's pretty good, right? I mean, healing, you know, who doesn't want to heal? Even if you're not Catholic, <laughs> you know what I mean? Healing prayers. Next one is daily meditation, meditations on God's love. I mean, how, come on. How great is that? God's love. All right, so I'm going to read from these September 8th. Today's September 8th, right? Fucking losing my shit here with the fucking dates. Yeah, it's the 8th. All right, cool. All right, so let's see what we got here. So what it does is it gives you like a... A passage from the Bible, a reflection, and then a prayer. Okay, here goes. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. The reflection. At the time of the elevation, it is helpful to imagine Jesus raising his body and blood to the Father in thanksgiving and petition for our healing. 
It is really Jesus offering the Holy Mass through his priesthood. The prayer. Father, heal me of the areas where I need healing as I offer the Holy Mass with Jesus. I surrender to your healing touch. Without doubt, this is the sublime moment of healing. I mean, that's so beautiful. The sublime moment of healing. You know, the way I kind of feel about some of this stuff, if you're not so religious or whatever, take what you like and leave the rest. Without a doubt, this is the sublime moment of healing. Pretty awesome. All right, next one is the daily meditations on God's love. All right, let's see here. Turn and have mercy on me, as you always do, to those who love your name. The reflection. Sometimes we may like a particular name simply because we've known and liked someone with that name. How much more so with God? The names we have for God should fill us with familiar joy, hope, respect, repentance, delight, strength, and love. The prayer. Father, Son, Spirit, Lord, Creator, Almighty, Savior, Messiah, Protector, Healer, Life Giver, Teacher, Rabbi, Eternal Love, have mercy on me. I mean, how fucking awesome is that? I mean, seriously. You know, Father, Son, Spirit, Lord, Creator, Almighty, Savior, Messiah, Protector, Healer, Life Giver, Teacher, Rabbi, Eternal Love. Eternal Love? Have mercy on me? Oh, this is such a beautiful passage. And I'm a big name guy. Big name guy. I'm a big name and birthday guy. I'm always going to remember your birthday. Um, and names mean a lot to me. So this is, this is great. I'm glad I can share this with everybody. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty dope. Daily meditations on God's love. All right, so yeah, let's get into some uh, since we last spoke and see what's been, uh, what's been cooking. You know what I'm saying? What's been cooking with the pizza man here. All right, so if you know me, you know I'm into fantasy football. That's a, um, a game that you play where you draft the players. And based on how well they do in real life football, you get points. And you have a certain amount of players, and you play against other people who have players. And whoever has the more points at the end of that week, you win that week. It's kind of the, the gist of it. And the best fucking part are the drafts. Because you get to pick all your players again. So every year you pick all your players. And it's so fucking fun. Your friends come over. You got music. You got food. Everyone's talking shit. Having a good time. Some people are drinking. Some people are smoking. Some people are eating pizza. Some people are turning off their Bluetooth speakers. Um, It's great. It's just so fucking fun. Plus, when you're like me, you dominate. You fucking dominate. And it's just the best. So I did... I think I did six drafts this weekend, uh, and it was a blast. I, I saw so many friends and um, got to pick all my players, and it's just like, plus it's also a sign of the fall season on its way, which is the best. It's my favorite season. It's the happy medium. It's the moderate climate. It's sweatshirt weather. You know, you're not freezing. You're not sweating. It's perfect. So, yeah, the drafts, they were just so much fun. I encourage anyone who's into football even a little bit to uh, get into a fantasy league. You honestly have to know like nothing. You can just draft off the app and it, it, it it's like it's that easy. Anyone can actually learn it. And it builds camaraderie. You know, you, you're invested a little bit more into the games that play on Sundays. Um, there's actually a game tonight, Thursday. So they'll have one game Thursday, they have all the games Sunday. Or I say all, but they have a ton of games Sunday, and then they have one game Monday night. So that's how the how the week goes. It starts on Thursday, continues to Sunday, and it finishes on Monday. So uh, it's it's just so fucking fun. Like, it's so fun. And you know what's kind of cool is, since I play, I know about everyone's team. I know so much about all these teams. So if I see someone out and they have a shirt on for fucking Chargers, the Raiders, the Chiefs, you know, uh, the Bills, whatever, I know all about their team. So I can just chat them up. So it's it's really cool to be able to uh, to have that and to kind of just like share with my friends and family and shit. So if you're not in a league, reach out to me. We can do a league or a lot of people at work do one. Um, and it's really not gambling. Like you, you put in like 50 bucks, some people 20, you know, 10, whatever. 
And then at the end, one or two people win. You know, the, the person who wins the whole thing gets it, and then maybe second place gets a little taste too. But you're not like gambling in the sense of like you're going to the casino and you're, you're you know, gambling every, every week. So it's not so much of like a gambling vibe. It's just more of uh, you put money into it to keep yourself interested and, you know, uh, in hopes that people stay, uh, stay active and pay attention. So like I said, I'm staying in Rio Rancho uh, with my sister uh, and niece, and it's been great. I don't see too much of them because our schedules are, are different, but it's just nice to be here. Switch it up a little bit. Um, I live on the way east side of Albuquerque, and I'm on the way west side of uh, of Albuquerque, really. To me, Rio Rancho is just a suburb of, of Albuquerque. But they're their own city and all that other bullshit, so whatever. Um, and it's cool. She's got a beautiful place, a great view, and it's just nice to kind of just, like, decompress. It's like kind of like a mini vacation, you know? And plus, like... It's cool to spend time with my niece, you know, like I give her hugs. I don't know, like I don't think I was hugged that much as a kid. <laughs> and it's really important. Hug your kids, you know, hug your fucking nieces and nephews and stuff. Like it's important. Um, so it's been really cool spending time with her. My sister, like I said, she keeps a way different schedule, so I don't see her too, too often. Uh, but. When we do, it's just it's nice to just chop it up and talk about our day and what's been going on. And um, I'm just super blessed to have her. She's not like my blood sister. Um, she's my half brother's half sister. But instead of going through all that or saying step and all this bullshit, she's my sister. And on the real, as far as our relationship, she's my sister. You know what I'm saying? Like we like none of the other bullshit. Um, so just wanted to shout her out. Shout out my niece. Um, so that's been, uh, that's been great. I've been connecting with a lot of friends lately. And honestly, being on this side of town, a lot of my, a lot of my friends and stuff, um, live on this side of town. So I've been hitting them up and we've been kicking it. And like I said, with the fantasy drafts, and I would encourage you guys to connect with your friends, connect with people. You know, even if your schedule is busy, just shoot them a text. You would be surprised how when someone's going through their day, when they get that text, almost randomly from you just saying, hey, what's up, how you doing, or maybe shooting them a song or a funny clip or a meme. It really can do a lot for someone's mental health and just the connection, the connection that that we have and the ability to use electronics and technology to stay connected with one another is super motherfucking underrated. So I just wanted to shout that out. Uh, let's see, huh? Yeah, so my tool belt of experiences is constantly growing, you know, like with life and everything happening and stuff. And I feel more equipped to like be there and do this journey of life. It's kind of interesting. Just something that I've, uh, just been going through and thinking about. It's been kind of, kind of eye opening, but yeah, so that's it for since we last spoke. Just kind of catching you up on where I'm at. Some fantasy football shit. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get into the self-care tip of the week. Let's fucking do it. Okay, so this one's pretty simple, but again, I got it on Instagram from my mental health what the fuck does it say? space, my mental health space, and it's how to support a friend going through a tough time. And there's just some, you know, it's a list of shit of how you can support somebody. It doesn't have to be a friend. It could be a coworker. It could be a fucking family member, anybody, anyone who's going through a tough time. So... I'm going to read off here. Depending on the individual situation, you may. Here's the list. Just be there for them. Give them space and time. Sometimes just having someone fucking there. They don't have to say shit. They don't have to give you advice. They don't have to fix anything. Just their presence alone to know that they're physically there means a lot. And I can attest to that. That's a biggie. Just be there. Just be present. The next one is be there to listen. Okay, so you're adding on something more now. Listen and validate their experience. 
Listening, like I said with the technology thing a minute ago, is underrated. People always want to give advice, you know. They they want to feel like they need to say something or they have to have a response or it, you know, it warrants a response. But sometimes the power of listening to somebody is so strong and can really do a lot for someone's healing. I know sometimes I, I have friends who and family members who just want to give advice, you know, because they love me. But I just need someone to listen. And sometimes you have to say to them, hey, I got something going on. I just need you to listen, please. So hold back any advice for the time being and just listen. Sometimes you have to preface it. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. It's good to be able to set it up so that way you know, like, if the person is prone to giving a lot of advice, you can say, hey, I just need you to be here and listen. Speak your peace. Next it is avoid giving advice and avoid silver linings. That's, you know, I mean, sometimes people want advice. And I've, I've learned in my relationships to ask the person. After we've done some listening and everything, I say, Are you, you know, do you want some advice? Do you want some feedback? And that's another healthy way of communicating because sometimes people, they don't want advice. They just want you to listen. They want you to absorb. They want you just to be there. You know, in some cases, based on what's going on, they kind of already know what's what, like the, the, you know, the lay of the land or what their options look like. So avoid giving advice. How to support a friend going through a tough time? Run errands and support them with daily chores, like go shopping, drop off food, do laundry. That's another biggie. I mean, just spending time with them and doing like the mundane or the stuff that they have to do with grocery shopping or post office runs or whatever the case is. Just spending time and, you know, so they don't have to be alone. That's definitely a biggie. I like that one. Run errands. Do a little joyful activity together. Yeah, enjoy life. You know, it can't all be about sadness and your feelings and emotions and shit. You know, it's good to do things together. You know, go fucking for a walk, go to the gym together, watch a movie, go get ice cream, you know, sit outside on these beautiful September nights and just talk and laugh, you know, do a little joyful activity. It doesn't have to be a lot. Go to the fucking botanical gardens and walk around, smell the fucking roses, you know, invite them out for a meal. This this should be number one for me because I love going out to eat. And I love booths. Like I said, I want to get married in a booth. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Invite them out for a meal, you know. It's nice to be able to have a nice meal and sit and talk, you know. Treat yourself a little bit, you know. And that's that's sometimes the easiest way to support someone is just to buy them lunch and go out and just chat it up, you know. Go for a walk or a small hike. Nature. Oh, sorry. Go for a walk or a small hike in nature together. Another underrated thing. Go for a walk. Nature is so beautiful. Get away from all this bullshit. Be around the fucking foliage and the trees and the grass and the smells. You know? I mean, for the most part, you can go to a park or you can go to the mountains. It's so important to, like, do. Just go outside. Get some vitamin D. Be, be amongst the natural elements. Take them to a class, sports, yoga, meditation. That's cool. I like that structure. I think that's, that's a good way to support a friend going through a tough time. Especially like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, like gym class or yoga, meditation. Those, again, those are, those are really positive things. Ask them to join you in supporting a good cause. There you go. Volunteer your, your time. Um... Maybe, uh, you know, they have a lot of those, like, um, those things where you could, like, um, sign up for those, like, walks for, like, um, certain, like, uh, diseases or, like, ailments. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of volunteer work that you could do that you can feel useful, you know. Um, not, not so much to, to like feed your ego, like, oh, I'm so good. I'm helping someone out or I'm, I'm doing this, but just to, just to sort of be selfless and do it, do something with someone for someone else. How to support a friend going through a tough time. Ask them what they are grateful for and compliment them. Gratitude lists are great. They are. 
I have a friend who's been asking me for them. And I give them three a night lately. And you don't have to think too hard. You really don't. Fuck, let's do one right now. Okay. I'm grateful for my dog Lulu, my sister's dog Stewie. They're sweet. Uh, I'm grateful for uh, contacts. I wear contacts and wore contacts since like the late 90s. Um, because I don't have to have glasses on my fucking face all the time. I can swim and shit and like look look fly as hell. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to wear, I don't have to be a, a four eyes. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, glasses, especially when you're bald like me, glasses are important. You got to accessorize. But anyway, I'm grateful for my contacts and uh, I'm grateful for um, how much water I drink. Growing up, I didn't really drink a lot of water. It was a lot of soda and like orange juice and shit. But ever since, God, honestly, ever since uh, I started working out in like the early aughts, I'm a big water guy. Love me some water. So those are the three things I'm grateful for. All right, moving on here. Check in regularly and ask how, how you can support them. Especially when they're going through a tough time. You want to check in, you know? We all go through something, and it's nice when you have someone who's, like, consistently there. And how hard is it to check in with a text message? We all take shits, right? We all have that moment where we're taking a shit, and we're like, oh, let me look at my phone. Maybe I'll text somebody. There you go. That's, <laughs> that's when you want to text somebody, when you're taking a shit. Or, you know, maybe you're taking a walk on lunch. Maybe you have a minute at work. Maybe before bed, in the morning, whenever. But this whole fucking thing about like, oh, I'm so busy or whatever, go fuck yourself. There's plenty of time to check in regularly. And it doesn't have to be this long-winded thing. Just say, hey, how you doing today? Or, hey, I thought about you. Or like I said earlier, send them a song or, you know, a, a meme or a picture or something. Form a support group of friends and take turns checking in, going for walks, eating together, running errands. That's cool. Strength in numbers. If you have a group of friends, like an actual group where everyone is friends, I think, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's important to try to get together. I mean, we all have such busy schedules, families and priorities and things that we have to give our energy to. But, you know, even just two people, you know what I'm saying? Like getting two people together. So there's three of you where you can just sort of do these things together or maybe plan it ahead of time. Say, hey, next month on this day, let's all go for a fucking walk or let's all, I don't know, play Frisbee golf at the park, you know, even if it's outside of your comfort zone, plan it, do it, you know, uh, let's see here. Last one. So how to support a friend going through a tough time, support them in seeking professional help. So this is this is a good one. A lot of people are intimidated by therapy or counseling and even more so having to actually like find it. You know, if you have insurance, sometimes just the whole, the, the um, process of going through your insurance and getting a therapist, it's, it's really a lot like dating because you have to find the right one. Just because this person's a therapist and they live close by doesn't mean they're the right fit for you. So it can be a little anxiety filled, but it's worth it. When you find the right therapist, it's so fucking worth it. And you can support your friend by doing this. I've done this amongst my relationships and, and friendships and help people find therapists and stuff. Or there's a lot of like support lines and stuff that you can um, that like you can do for people. And most of them are free, like those like support lines and stuff. So, And again, nothing wrong with professional help because you know what it says? It says that you give a fuck. And that, that really goes a long way. Wow, this is a pretty long episode. All right, so hey, that's my self-care tip. Let's, uh, let's read some poetry. All right, so we're going to read some poetry from the Haiku Anthology. All right, let's do it. Chained to the fence, the dog's collar. Under the old car, oil puddles ripple in the winter wind. On the padlock, snow melting. In the mirror, the open door blows shut behind me. Clouds blowing off the stars. That's cool. Broken bowl, the pieces still rocking. Wrinkles in the white icing of the birthday cake. That's cool. Grandmother's mirror. 
aid spots the glass. Bitter tea in the empty cup, the folded lemon. Snowflakes dust on the toes of my boots. Pine needles in the broken curve of the ornament. Closed bedroom door, her shadow darkens the crack of light. Only letting in the cat until the morning star. First snow brought in from the suburbs on the neighbor's car. Between lace curtains, the white cat's eyes follow a snowflake. Sierra sunrise, pine needles sinking deeper in a patch of snow. Cloud shadow long enough to close the poppies. Returning quail call to us from the moment of which he speaks. Soon after the child, the puppy goes to sleep. That's awesome. While I'm gone, my dog takes the driver's seat. I love that. I love that. My dog will do that uh, with when I when I have done that in the car, and then also uh, when she sleeps with me. If I get up and I go to the gym, I'll come back, and she'll be sleeping where I was sleeping, and it's so fucking sweet. All right, last one here. Children in single file through the puddle again. <laughs> That's awesome. These haikus are great because they're they're so small, but they they um, they just really hold a lot of weight and they they carry a lot of memory and they can bring you to a place. It's pretty amazing. All right, let's get on to the True Blue fucking playlist song of the week. Okay, so uh, Queen Elizabeth in England, she passed away today. She was like 96. Um, rest in peace to her. I have no like um, ill will or feelings or you know anything like that. I've heard she was a nice lady, um, but I don't really get into politics, especially um, foreign politics. I'm going to drink some water here. Mm. I went to England in 2001. I didn't go to the palace. Um, I went to a bunch of other places. Went to Hyde Park, which is a really nice park there. But uh, yeah, so I chose the song Queen is Dead by the Smiths, my favorite band. Off the album, The Queen is Dead. Came out in 1986. A little fun fact. One of my first memories is the Mets winning the World Series in 1986. I was four years old. So again, this is, a, this is probably my second favorite Smith song ever. It's so progressive. It's, in my opinion, the most punk rock song because of uh, the music, how like driven it is. Uh, pardon me. How the lyrics are. The lyrics, one thing about Morrissey is the singer of the Smiths, he'll tackle so many different things in a song. He'll talk about politics. He'll talk about love. He'll talk about um, life. He'll talk about poetry. And it's just, you know, it's so cool. He can entwine all this stuff into one song. Um, it's a very punk rock song, like I said, because it does have to do with some with some politics and stuff. Uh, great lyrics. Um, if this song were 50 minutes, I'd still love it. It's like six minutes or something like that. Um, and it's such a good fucking song. Man, it just has so much like so much power behind it. So many great lines. Um, I've seen Morrissey play it a couple times live, and it's the best. Really, it's just like the best. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, I'm going to read the lyrics to it because uh, they are some of the best lyrics from the Smiths who are known for their lyrics. Uh, so here, here goes. Farewell, <coughs> farewell to this land's cheerless marshes, hemmed in like a boy between arches. Her very loneliness with a head in the sling. I'm truly sorry, but it sounds like a wonderful thing. I say, Charles, don't you ever crave to appear on the front of the Daily Mail dressed in your mother's bridal veil. So I checked all registered historical facts and I was shocked into shame to discover how I'm the 18th pale descendant of some old queen or other. Has the world changed or have I changed? Has the world changed or have I changed? Some nine-year-old tough peddles drugs. I never even knew what drugs were. And so I broke into the palace 
with a sponge and a rusty spanner. She said, I know you and you cannot sing. I said, that's nothing. You should hear me play piano. We can go for a walk where it's quiet and dry and talk about precious things. But when you're tied to your mother's apron, no one talks about castration. We can go for a walk where it's quiet and dry and talk about precious things like love and law and poverty. These are the things that kill me. We can go for a walk where it's quiet and dry and talk about precious things, but the rain that flattens my hair, these are the things that kill me. So you'll notice he's got a sense of humor. He also talks a lot about politics, the queen. A lot of people, uh, especially in the 80s, they were very against the royal family. It was, you know, probably still are. But um, if you think about it, it's kind of fucked that, like, there's one family that rules the whole damn country. I mean, that's kind of weird. Um, so a lot of this so far is him kind of, like, pointing that out and also involving some poetry. Past the pub that saps your body and the church who'll snatch your money. The queen is dead, boys, and it's so lonely on a limb. Past the pub that wrecks your body and the church, all they want is your money. The queen is dead, boys. And it's so lonely on a limb. Life is very long when you're lonely. 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 Now, again, I just read that kind of just as is, almost like a poem. But trust me, the way it is in the song, it's it's a lot more memorable. Some great fucking lines in this. Like, I just, I can't say enough good things about it. And I thought since she passed away today, you know, this would be some way of sort of honoring her. I mean, she was a human being who passed away. So at the bare minimum, you know, I can, I can, you know, get on that. So, um, so yeah. So the Queen is Dead by the Smiths off the album The Queen is Dead. So there you have it. That's session 59. I'm your host, Zach Sucardi. You can find me on Instagram at pod, uh, at True Blue Podcast. Hope everyone has a great week. Reach out to your friends. Do a gratitude list. Drink some water. Eat pizza. Be happy. Oh, man, man, man.